We here at the Movie Ticket Radio Podcast salute all the YouTubers who do all their videos because, you know, I found out this is a lot of work. Hi, I'm J.R. Russ, and we're posting our podcasts here now just for more people to find and hear them. But, you know, John Landecker and I are pretty much radio guys. In fact, folks have said that we have faces for radio. That means no pictures, no video, no graphics, just this. So sit back and enjoy the oral experience, spelled A-U-R-A-L. That means sound, not what you're probably thinking. Movie Ticket Radio. And welcome to the Movie Ticket Radio podcast. Yes, that's our official name, and thank you for joining. I am your host, J.R. Russ with your friendly co-host, John Records Landecker. Yes, career broadcasters, and he's Mr. Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we have the Movie Ticket Radio radio station that you can go to at movieticketradio.com and hear the hits you hear in movies. And this here is a podcast where we're talking about the movies, and we're actually playing a few clips of music. Not the biggest hits, because you know what they sound like, but ones that are more obscure, which... Our legal department tells us we can do under the fair use doctrine, which means that we're instructing or teaching about these songs. So you're learning about them perhaps for the first time. So enjoy those musical interludes as we talk about the songs you hear in movies. And John, what are we talking about today? Well, J.R., I believe we're going to be enjoying the cinematic stylings of Beverly Hills Cop, 1984. Yes, and in fact, I think we're going to look at one, two, and three if we have time here in this episode. Do we really have to? No, of course we will. (laughs) Of course. And it gets faster as we go along, because let me tell you, there just seems to be less really good music in that 90s one. And let me first mention that you are going to hear some talkback or echo it's like me talking behind john a few seconds later and uh, we cleaned up most of it as much as we could but there might be a little in there and it's weird and we'll try and fix it for next time so forgive us please and now back to john landecker's opinions about beverly hills cop one two and three well i've got a pretty much the same opinion about all of them okay which is well you got to hold it till later? It's, well, it's, it's, it's a reflection of the times. Yeah. Okay, so Beverly Hills Cop came out in 1984. So you remember what music sounded like. Instrumental music, all sorts of music, synthesizers, drum kits, nothing really musically organic. I mean, to me, Beverly Hills Cop, the soundtrack, Sounds like one big Pointer Sisters record. Well, who I, mean, I love. <laughs> so I kind of, I like a lot of the music in it. Well, I like the Pointer Sisters, okay. But after a while, it's bum, 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 bum. Well, it's like a James Bond movie. You keep hearing the James Bond song all the time in it. Well, the James Bond song is a good song. <laughs> okay. No, that's true. <laughs> Don't you like music that goes... Well, it's that Axel F theme that gets be gets repeated over and over and over and over again, and then they released it after the movie as a single, and well, it was a hit. Yes, and of course, he's Axel Foley, so it's Axel F, and it's Axel F's theme, so you gotta exactly. hear it. Exactly. There it's you gotta, are. It's gotta be in the movie. Yep. Harold Faltermeyer wrote it, produced it, performed it. Harold Faltermeyer. But the show really opens with a great song by Glenn Frey. Yes, it does. Yep, The Heat is On. Uh, Keith Forsey and Harold Faltermeyer wrote that song. So don't fault the Faltermeyer, will you? No, I guess not. I didn't realize he uh, had a writing credit on The Heat is On. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Pointer Sisters, this is a great song for that truck chase through detroit neutron dance that is an incredible scene isn't it you know i was i was watching it with my wife and i said you know this is all real this isn't cgi no or special effects or green screen this is 1984 they're really wrecking all those cars and that with the semi and in fact a a tandem semi with the second trailer it's a, a body shop's dream yeah (laughs) <laughs> or a junkyards. Exactly. 
yeah. and probably not Eddie Murphy, but definitely a stuntman hanging on the back of that truck. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And it's uh, the new, it's the Neutron Dance, right? Yeah. I like that Pointer Sister song. Yeah, Ali Willis uh, co-wrote it with Michael Cimbello, who did Maniac. Ooh, yeah, uh, I, mean, I know that name. And I've watched that scene several times, and one time the truck comes through an intersection, and it hits a f- truck, car- like a pickup truck with fruit on it. Yeah. And then later you see that same accident from a different angle. And there's a poor Volkswagen bug yeah. somewhere along the root. <laughs> root just gets crushed. Just demolished. And oh. then I think they damaged the radiator in the truck because <laughs> it has no cardboard or white thing over the front of the truck through part of the chase scene. And then later in the chase scene, it has this white thing over the front. Wouldn't surprise me. So they must have damaged it and said, well, we can't do that again. That cost us $2,000 to fix. Continuity. Continuity. Yep. Yeah. Got to watch that stuff. Yep. Um, another uh, disco, I guess, song, uh, Stir It Up, Patti LaBelle. Yep. I re- and I like Patti LaBelle. Same writing credit, Ali Willis and Danny Sambello. Oh, that's not yep. Michael Sambello, I said. It's Danny Sambello. So I don't know if Danny there's any Sambello. relation. I guess there's more than one Sambello. Well, it could be. There's more than one fellow. Named. That is a Sambello. Yes. My close encounter with Patti LaBelle. I was working at a radio station in Philadelphia, and I think I was flying home to Chicago, to Northwest Indiana, and was at the Philadelphia airport, and Patti LaBelle came walking through the airport wearing a fox fur coat with about six tails dragging behind it. God. And I didn't introduce myself, even though I was playing her songs at the present time, but I just, uh, I wasn't really sure until after she went by and I went, oh, that was Patty LaBelle, but I, I got to catch her plane. Yeah. Right. So, John, let me ask you personally, do you really want my love? Uh, absolutely, JR. Okay. Uh, I, felt th- I, I thought I had made that abundantly clear on many previous occasions. Well, then sing me your song, Junior. Uh, that, of course, another song written by Junior and Glenn Nightingale. Do you really want my love? Yes. I don't know. I think that's the song in the strip bar. That's going. See? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, well, you know. I've got a friend working at a radio station in Tampa, and that's what they're playing. But yeah, it was the disco era. So you're going to hear that kind of stuff. That's right. Or Patti LaBelle, more often, too. New Attitude. Also yeah. in there, Sharon Robinson and John Gillotin and Bunny Hull co-wrote. Yeah. We like to give uh, writing credits here on this show. No, I do, indeed. I do like the next song. This is another from the strip club. and Well, and appropriately titled Nasty Girl. Yep. Written by Vanity, performed by Vanity Six. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, there's um, six times more Vanity. Oh, in, well. <laughs> I have no idea. More Vanity more often. Can't succeed without it. Why'd they invent the mirror? And then there's Don't Get Stopped at Beverly Hills that I, I don't know what that is, performed by Shalimar. I'll see if I can uh, slip a little bit of it in here. Need it time. Well, let me tell you, I thought that was a very significant song in this motion picture, as a matter of fact, because what? it was being aimed at African-Americans. Ooh. And it was, don't get stopped in Beverly Hills because you'll be arrested for being black. That's right. And it was abundantly clear in the scene that that was what that was about. And certainly this is 1984 and it's now 2021. And some might still say, don't get stopped in Beverly Hills if you're black. African-American. Eddie Murphy gets thrown out a window and he gets arrested. Yeah. I mean, what is that? Mm -hmm. If that's not the message, I don't know what is. Yeah. And for that, we give you gratitude. That was a song written by Danny Elfman and performed there. And I put this in just because Danny Elfman does the Simpsons theme. Yes, he does. And he's done a bunch of other scores for movies and television. Yeah. Well, well-respected composer. Yep. An Emergency, written by H. Rice and S. Sheridan. Uh, Rocky Robbins did that one. I'm not 
familiar with the old Rocky Robbins. I think of the emergency. Wasn't that Cool and the Gang did one? God, I don't know. Well, rock and roll me again, will you, John? Oh, anytime. That, by the way, is written by Mark Benno, Rock and Roll Me Again. Yeah, Richard Thyssen. And, yeah, and he's a significant guy, Mark Benno. Yeah. I forget why. And, <laughs> and it was performed by the system who had a hit in the 80s, which, do you know that name of that song? Septic? <laughs> no. <laughs> that wasn't Septic a, That's system? a good guess. That's a good guess. No. <laughs> Don't disturb this groove, man. Hey, I didn't play that song. I didn't, oh. I didn't disturb it, and I didn't play it. All right, well, I played the hell out of it. And now look. Look what's next. Written, produced, and performed by Harold Faltermeyer. Axel Uff. Yep. Boom, 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 boom. And that concludes uh, Beverly Hills Cop 1984. Okay, well, we're done. That was a good job. I thought we're going to move right along oh, to Beverly Hills yeah, Cop 2. Yeah, all right, if you insist. I do. All right, uh, so fast forward three years. 1987. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Another one opening with one of your and my favorite groups. Bob Seger. Shakedown. <laughs> Written and by, here he is again. By, he, that Faltermeyer guy must have made a vault full of money. Yeah. Off of all of this. He co-wrote it with Keith Forsey and Bob Seger. Yeah. Wow. Pretty crazy. And they didn't have Zoom back then, so somehow they all got together in a room and wrote this song. Yeah. In Deep by Charlie Sexton and Scott Wilk. I don't know that one. Do you? Me neither. <laughs> all right. If I can find some, well, well it's, uh, I like to... I don't like to play the hits here because that's not what this show is about. MovieTicketRadio.com plays the hits you hear in movies. But this, we play the stiffs or the more bizarre songs because you know. Hey, that's you know, it. I love that phrase. Hey, guess what? We play the stiffs. That's right. I mean, you know what Shakedown sounds like in uh, uh, Axel F, but do you know what In Deep by Charlie Sexton sounds like? No. So if I can find a no. clip. We're sticking it in. Yes, yeah, that certainly sounded in deep to me. Yeah, gotta admit it sounds 80s. Very Harold Faltermeyer ish. Exactly. Uh, Corey Hart also had a song in there called Hold On which I did listen to, and it was no, let me think. Sunglasses at Night? Yes. Right. Or the other one with this big saxophone thing in it. Uh, you got me. The only one I know is I wear your sunglasses at night. Ba -da 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 -da. But I can do this. Never Surrender. That was a huge Corey Hart ballad with a big saxophone in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, up next, Cross My Broken Heart. Pretty big song by the Jets. Don't know it. Stephen Bray, Tony Pierce. Don't know it. Well, 1987, where were you and what were you playing? That's how I know music. Uh, 1987, you don't want to know. Because the place where I was, they didn't know what they were doing either. <laughs> so that made two of us. That wasn't the mistake on the lake, was it? No, absolutely oh, not. Okay. I was in Baltimore at the number one radio station, and so we played the hell out of the Jets. Yeah, I'll bet. And then there was Be There by the Pointer Sisters. That was also a pretty good bid chart for them. You know, Pointer Sisters songs make pretty good songs for soundtracks. Yeah. Love Actually, there's a great Pointer Sisters song when um, the Prime Minister dances to it coming down a staircase. They serve soundtracks well the pointer sisters tunes they do i can't stand it jr why not because it's by david allen jones and harold payne sorry and david performed by, and performed by sue ann sue ann sue ann had was that uh, sue, sue ann Nivens from <laughs> mary tyler moore i have no idea for all i know it's a misprint and we're supposed to sue somebody named ann yeah i have no idea and then there's another, uh, here's a Giorgio Moroder song with Tom mm. Whitlock, all revved up, yeah. but not the meatloaf, all revved up and no place to go. No, this is Jermaine Jackson. Yeah. There were not a lot of high cost songs in here. I'm sure that all the Jacksons were all revved up at some point. <laughs> Hold on. 
Just hold on now. Uh, James Wirick wrote the song pre- performed by Keita Bill. Keita Bill? Keta? Yeah, the song's called Hold On. I don't know who. No, nah, I don't know. Isn't there like a, uh, a Keta diet or something? Keto. Ke- oh, Keto. Oh, yeah. never mind. No. Keto? Hold it a sec. Oh, no, this is Keta. I was about ready to go back to the Green Hornet, but this is Keta Bill. Oh, no, Green Hornet. Uh, you know, there's got to be a better way. Got to be uh, performed by James Ingram. That was actually yep. a kind of a mid chart song. Yeah. Andre. Simone. Okay. You get that one, wrote it. Well, it's A N D D R E, so, you know. And, and this is the one they probably went to the well to pay uh, the. Oh, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Pay the, the big royalties for. Yep. Yeah. I want your sex. Well, well, thank you, but you're not getting it. Uh, George Michael wrote and produced that. That was a pretty big song. In fact, I played it in Baltimore, and it was I Want Your Sex. But when it first came out, I was also working in Washington, and they got the I Want Your Love version. Mm. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they re- it was like the G-rated version of the song. Wait, are you telling me that sex isn't love? No, apparently not uh, what that program director <laughs> thought. <laughs> Well, speaking of love. 36, as a matter of fact. 36 lovers. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot of gifts on Valentine's Day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, performed by RFTW, Ready for the World. Yeah. Uh, another song I don't know. I, I knew, uh, like, yeah. Oh, Sheila, I think they did. You know, proving once again that, well, at least I am not ready for the world. No. So Or not ready for 80s Top that- 40, I think. Take that for whatever it's worth. And you know, Jr. I see that we've arrived at Beverly Hills Cop 3, 1994. Yeah. And you'll never guess what the first song is. Yes, Axel F. Revive. And wait, let's, let's say it, everybody. Harold, come on now. Harold Faltermeyer. Very good. Thank you. But now this says performed by Niall Rogers featuring Richard Hilton. Different version. Wow. <laughs> At least according to the um, yeah, information okay. I have. Oh, All and right. by the way, I didn't mention in 36 Lovers, written by John Eaton, Melvin Riley Jr., and Gary Spinolia. And I don't want to get a nasty note at movieticketradio at gmail.com saying, why didn't you mention us? We wrote that song, you idiots. Of course not. So we're, uh, we've fast forwarded again from 1987 to 1994. This is where they obviously ran out of money at some point and said, let's try and make one more. Yes. Oh, here was a pretty big hit. Uh, Come See About Me by the Supremes oh, was featured. Oh, I think that was a pretty big hit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holland Dozier Holland composition. Oh, yeah. As they were coming to prominence in excess. I believe it's in excess. In excess, you're right. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's like you driving down the Schuylkill Expressway or this river. Schuylkill wheel. <laughs> in excess. Oh, that was, uh, yeah. So is this an after in excess hit it or before? Let me do a quick check. Well, it's the original lineup. Michael Hutchins died, but he sang on this song. Need You Tonight came out in 1987. So I guess they just found this in their catalog and brought it out then. Sounds that way, yeah. Did we get the other writers on this? Andrew Ferris and Keith Forsey and Mark Youngersmith. Okay, so those are all the band members worked on that. And uh, so they had that one in there. And then we go leaving. Okay. And uh, that was Ralph Sedak as Ralph Wiggins, Raphael Wiggins, John Smith, Q-Tip as Jay Davis, and Ali Shaheed Muhammad, Ali Shaheed Muhammad as a Muhammad. Yes, those are the writers. Performed by Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Well, you know, live for them gangster Zs, man. Yeah, anything with a Z. That's my, uh, when you when I hear that, I'm ready to go. Yeah, well, you were coming into um, the 90s and, you know, rap. I thought rap would be the disco of the 90s, but it really caught on and it's still here today. And you're hearing it in commercials and everything. And it's spelled L-U-V, the number four, D-E-M-G-A-N-G-S-T-A, apostrophe Z. Z. Yes. Yes. By E-Z hyphen E. 
A lot of extra punctuation there. Fewer letters, but more punctuation. Well, kids get smarter as time goes on, JR. You know, they want to be able to include their punctuation. Written by Dirty Red. <laughs> Kevin, like I just said. <laughs> Kevin Shackey Carter and Henrik Milling as Dr. Jam. Mm. And then a uh, very big uh, kind of rap dance group or a couple of guys, producers, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, along with Shante oh, yeah. Moore, produced a song called Mood that was in there. And she, and she or he, <laughs> I don't know Shanty Moore, I'm sorry, performed right. it. Well, uh, Jimmy Jam, for sure, I've heard of as being one of the premier producers. Well, and, and then there's one that I found in here that I don't remember this at all in the movie. North Dakota, South Dakota, performed by Jerry Lewis. The Jerry Lewis? I think, because it's co-written by Tony Martin and Dan Shapiro and Harold Bourne. So I'm going to see if I can play a little of that, if I can locate it. Tony Martin? Yeah. He was a middle-of-the-road crooner. North Dakota, South Dakota, Illinois, and Indiana Moon. But I'm from Jersey! I'm going to have to go back and watch the movie because I don't remember that at all. I have no idea what that song is. The Place Where You Belong. Another one by sung by Shai, S-H-A-I, Carl Martin, Trey Lawrence, or Lorenz, Daniel Van Rensselaer, Mark Gay, and Garfield Bright. The Right Kind of Lover. That's a lot of writers for one song. Yeah, well, maybe they're, the, they're in the group Shy. Who knows? The Right Kind of Lover, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Again. With Ann Nesby, uh, performed by Patti LaBelle. Yeah, good tune. And Actually, Ann Bennett, Nesby, and Jimmy Wright co-wrote as well. Well, look at this next song. Right Thing, <laughs> Wrong Way. By? Jimmy Jam, James Jimmy Harris Jam. III, Terry Lewis, Terrence Trent Darby. Oh, I love Terrence Trent Darby. Wishing Well. Yeah, Wishing Well. That's a do, great do, song. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, not then, high on my list of faves, but, you know, okay. Yeah. And then, well, something we always like to do when the weather's warm. Summer jamming. Ian Lewis wrote it. Inner Circle performed it. Which is ironic that Jimmy Jam didn't write summer jamming, but no. No, no. And then finally, getting credit is Amazing Grace, written by John Newton, and I think that's the, tra the traditional version, but performed by... The Reverend Al Green. Oh, that's right. He, he was a reverend. Yeah. Well, then, then it all makes sense now. It makes perfect sense. So there you go. I mean, we're wrap, we wrapped up three movies in well, under a half hour, and probably we'll, we'll be down around 25 minutes yeah. after I edit the hell out of this. And, Sounds good to me. And, Sounds uh, great. So that's another edition of the Movie Ticket Radio podcast, mm. and we keep seeing more and more people seeking it out, playing it out, Telling their friends, we're up to about 20 places now that you can get it. Um, Apple and Google and Pandora and Stitcher and all those different kind of places. So and tune in is a big one because not only can you listen to the podcast, but you can also listen to Movie Ticket Radio, the 24-7 stream of the hits you hear in movies. Mm -hmm. So, hey, check it out. Tell your friends. And enjoy, and let's keep growing this thing wildly, like a coronavirus, only in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. What do you think we want to do next time? How, how about the big chill? Oh, yeah, that was probably one of the first really big movies to bring oldies into it. If it wasn't the first, it's the one that made the biggest impression first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one where the kids were on the railroad track and... You thought they were going to get killed? Kids were on a railroad track. Uh, I thought they were going to get killed. Uh, Stand By Me. Oh, great movie. Yeah. Yeah, so we can maybe do that one at some point, too. Sure. Well, we can do anything. We can. We can do anything we want. Whether it's new, old, there's no program directors here, pal. Absolutely not. Only if we agree to disagree, then will that happen. Or actually, if we don't agree <laughs> and disagree, then problems. You know... You're explaining of disagreeing and agreeing is, I find disagreeable. <laughs> hey! 
Ba-dum, bum. All right. Well, I'm J.R. Russ, so thanks for listening. I'm John Landecker. Ditto. And again, if you want to check things out and, and contact us, just write to movieticketradio at gmail.com. It's movieticketrado, because I couldn't get enough characters for Twitter. <laughs> so that's our Twitter account is radio, <laughs> but I figured you'd figure that out. It's R-A-D-O. Gotcha. And we also have a Movie Ticket Radio Facebook. So we're just all over the social media. We would have gotten an Instagram, but we don't think people want to look at our pictures. Ooh. <laughs> did you just drown? <laughs> no, but I almost did a spit take. <clears throat> all right. Well, thanks a lot for listening, and we'll catch you next time with... The Big Chill. Bye. Bye-bye. Movie Ticket Radio.